Hey guys, it's Jeff. Welcome to G Whiskey. This is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey and every once in a while I throw on other whiskey related content. Today we're doing a list and this list is part of an ongoing series that I'm doing where I focus on unique brands, unique distilleries, and today I want to shine a spotlight on some unique sherried whiskeys. So it'll be a fun one. Stick around. All right, so the saga of unique whiskey lists continues. Uh, so far we've done distillate driven whiskeys, we've done dirty whiskeys, and today we're gonna be talking about sherried whiskeys. So these are all whiskeys that have their own unique signature style. They're not boring, they're not generic, they're doing something different. I'm gonna keep this going next week with my heavily peated list, and then I might still keep it going. I might swing back around to distillate driven whiskeys afterwards, just because I like the theme, I'm having fun with it, so I'm gonna milk it. One thing to keep in mind with all the lists in this series is that I'm not naming off my favorite brands, my favorite distilleries. I'm not telling you which bottles to buy here. I'm just saying these brands are different and they stand out and the bottles that I put forward, I think exemplify the house style perfectly. Another thing to keep in mind here is that there is a lot of overlap with these themes. So, you know, you can have a whiskey that's dirty and peated and sherried and it might pop up on any one of those lists. So if there's something that you didn't see in previous lists and you haven't seen it yet, that doesn't mean it's not gonna pop up down the line. But that being said, of course, I'm always happy to hear your suggestions. There is no order to this list. It's all meaningless. These are not structured in terms of preference or any kind of ascending order. They're just kind of there. Uh, I honestly don't even know why I included the numbers. Um, are they good for the algorithm? Probably. Anyway, I'm going to name off seven distilleries that give us unique sherried whiskeys. I'll give you three word descriptors and I'll give you the example bottle. Uh, and I suppose that's it. You guys know the drill here. I have a mystery pour in the glass. It is a fantastic whiskey. Make sure you stick around till the end of the list and I'll tell you what that is. And I suppose that's it. Let's jump into our list. In the meantime, if you'll kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. So we're going to start things off with an honorable mention, and that is Glen Farkless. Uh, these guys have an old school character. Their style of sherry whiskey is not modern or overly sweet or too over the top. My go-to bottle from them is the 15 year old. Uh, the rest of the brand can be hit or miss. They don't always give us good ABVs, but on the whole, it is a very unique style of whiskey. And I like that they kind of keep things old school. So honorable mention, Glen Farkless. All right, kicking things off at number seven, we've got Ben Romick. Uh, the bottle I'm gonna put forward is the Cast Strength release. Uh, these ones are usually about 10 years old. If you're watching from Asia, you might have access to the 12 year old Cast Strength release, which I think is better still. Uh, but yeah, a lot of people wanted to see this whiskey on the dirty list. For me, modern Ben Romick is no longer dirty. I think the older bottlings were, but modern Ben Romick, not so dirty anymore, but it's definitely very unique and very intense. These guys have a great house style. We've got some gentle peat. We've got some very forward sherry. These guys favor first fill sherry casks. Um, this one is the go-to Springbank alternative, and that makes sense. It's a bit more polished than Springbank. It's not as coastal. It's not as earthy, but yes, it is a good alternative. Uh, I would describe this whiskey as balanced, rich, and farmy. It's a beautiful whiskey. Comes in at number seven, Ben Roma. Coming in at number six, speaking of Springbank, Springbank. Uh, of course, the 12 year old cast strength is my go-to sherry expression. They do have a bunch of others, but that's probably the one most people think of. Uh, but of course this one, you know, it's getting recommended because it is a beautiful and unique sherry whiskey, but it's also Springbank. Good luck finding it. Hope it's a good price if you see it at all. Still a great whiskey though, and it still needs to make an appearance on the list. Uh, the 10 year old has already shown up on another list. I put that on my dirty list. And ironically, the 12 is actually a little bit dirtier than the 10, at least in my opinion. But because it's so heavily sherried, it pops up on this list instead. Um, I would describe it as farmy, complex, and intense. Great stuff. Again, if you can find it. At number six, we've got Springbank. Coming in at number five, we've got Mortlock. I'm gonna use the 12 as my example bottle. This is good whiskey. And the thing is, it's Diageo, so we don't get the specs or the ABV that we always want here. But the style of whiskey is so characterful and it's so unique. Like there's a reason Mortlock sherried whiskeys are so legendary. 
As with other distilleries that you're going to see on this list, and as with a lot of other distilleries that have popped up in this series about unique whiskeys, these guys use worm tubs. Uh, and we're not going to get too technical here, but it's a production method that adds a lot of weight and character to a distillate. I would describe this whiskey as meaty, spicy, and earthy. It's beautiful stuff. Comes in at number five, more luck. Coming in at number four, we've got a brand that I've been pushing for a while now, and I want more people to start talking about this stuff. Ben Rinnis makes great sherried whiskey. Uh, they don't have much of a line. In fact, the only OB release that I know of is part of Diageo's Flora and Fauna line, which I've heard is a line that's not sold in the United States. I can't be sure about that. If you're an American, maybe you can confirm, but that's a shame because this is a cool line. Uh, our 15 year old here is a great one if you like Mortlock style whiskeys, which is to say meaty, savory whiskeys. Um, it's very sherry forward. And of course we have a nice age statement. Unfortunately, like Mortlock, this is another Diageo product, which means our ABV here comes in at 43%, which is unfortunate, but because it's got such a weighty distillate, it doesn't hurt the whiskey that much and it still tastes quite substantial. I would describe this whiskey as meaty, savory, and complex. At number four, Ben Rennes. For number three, we've got a brand that people have been recommending nonstop since I started this series on unique whiskeys, and that's Edra Dower. Uh, a lot of people wanted to see this one pop up on that first video about uh, distillate driven whiskeys, which is fair. Uh, a lot more people wanted to see this one show up on the dirty list, which is also fair. I mean, it, it would have worked for both. But personally, when I think of Edra Dower, and I know this isn't always the case, I think of Sherry. Uh, we'll use the 12 year old as my example bottle. Uh, this is the most intense sherry. It's like very bombastic, over-the-top sherry. Uh, it's not going to suit everyone, and you do need to be in the mood for something that rich. Uh, granted, that's more the cast strength releases than our 12-year-old here, but yeah, their sherry is... It's a lot. And somehow, behind that full-blown, intense sherry assault, we still get loads of distillate, which speaks to just how characterful of a whiskey this is. So it's really unique stuff. It's one of the densest whiskeys that you're gonna find. Uh, I describe this as, well, yeah, dense, rich, and funky. So coming in at number three, you guys finally got your Edra Dower mention. Coming in at number two, I've got Glen Gary. Now this is a brand that I don't always get on with, but I'm in the minority there. Most enthusiasts love it. And there is one bottle from them that I absolutely do love, and that's gonna be the bottle I recommend here, and that's the 15-year-old cast strength. These guys are really unique. They have a strong herbal element to their whiskeys. Their releases are usually sherry forward, and they're usually craft presented, oftentimes giving us 48% ABV, which is appreciated. Um, I would describe this whiskey as powerful, herbal, and complex. Uh, again, not my favorite brand, but the 15 is a beauty. Arbitrarily, this lands at number two, Glengarry. My choice for number one is not my favorite, but it is a great brand. I've got the Glen Turret here. We'll use the 12 year old as an example. They also have a heavily sherry 15 year old. Uh, they do have some peated stuff out there, but when I think of this brand, I think of sherry first. Much like Edra Dower, the distillate has a lot to say, even though it's behind an absolute boatload of sherry cask influence. I'd say this whiskey is spicy, musty, and oaky. Very characterful stuff, comes in at number one. Glen Turret. All right, that was it guys. That was the list. I hope you enjoyed it. Of course, it is an incomplete list and there are plenty of other very unique, very characterful sherry whiskeys out there. And whatever you think I missed, be sure to let me know what it is down below in the comments. Like I said, I'm not above milking this theme even more. Uh, I might put out more videos like this down the line because it's fun. I love the idea of celebrating unique whiskeys and there's so many unique distilleries out there that it's just, it's fun to highlight these ones, go over them with you. So yeah, let me know what you've got. Um, for those of you who stuck around to find out what my mystery pour is, I've got Glenlivet. Now I'm sure this one is a surprise to a lot of you because this is typically a very commercial distillery. A lot of their stuff tends to be gentle, mass marketed, and maybe even a little bit generic, but not all. This one is an Oloroso matured 13 year old cast strength expression. Now this one is a Taiwan exclusive, so that's not really fair. But if you can't find this one, and I'm sure most of you can't, 
check out their original stories releases, check out their sherried signatory releases. These guys make really unique whiskey. Unfortunately, their whiskeys are only great when they put in the effort, uh, which explains why for the most part, it's not a brand that's celebrated by enthusiasts, but their capacity to make great whiskey is there, and some of their releases are just incredible. This is one of them, I would describe it as sulfury, dense, and powerful, beautiful stuff, Glenlivet. And I think that's it for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to help support the channel, I do have the Patreon. Otherwise, you can like, comment, and subscribe. That's always appreciated. As I said, you can put your suggestions down below for future lists. And I suppose that's it. We'll see you next time. Bye, guys.